Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Arnie Lukes here at the Crossroads, and I have our two guests present for today's forum, uh, Judy Octoloni from Victoria. Welcome, Judy. Thanks, Arnie. Good morning. Good morning. And Beata Lukes from Adelaide. Welcome, Beata. Hello, everyone. Hmm. Now, the, um, the forum today, we did a little bit of a preliminary discussion, and we agreed that our thinking, our thinking towards health, and towards our diet and towards our well-being is actually a process and it's not a static I'll make a decision and this is it um, when I was young um, I didn't really concentrate on food or diet or my health or whatever in fact I was probably testing every known limit that's available um, but as I got became a parent I started co to consider the ramifications of food and health and diet on my children and then that rubbed off um, with it onto, onto my thinking as this continued to evolve, um, I, I changed my habits. Um, if you like, junk food was reduced. In fact, it's, it's virtually eliminated now, but it was reduced over a period of time. And, uh, and also perhaps vitamin supplements came in. And now it's to the point where there is, no, um, there is no junk food at all. In fact, there's no processed food, almost none at all in our diet. And uh, we look at raw foods and we look at lightly cooked foods. And now we also introduce organic food and organic meats into, uh, into our diet. And further that the evolution went that we also promote um, um, fermented foods as a supplement to the diet. And so this evolution of thinking has taken a lifetime to get where, where I am. But the thing is that I, I didn't sit still, I learnt. And I think that that's fascinating, that your point of view today may not be the end or should not be the end position. Because um, it, as your health becomes, if you like, more dependent on what you actually do, and when I say more dependent, I mean that age catches up to you, and uh, you've got to consider um, um, your habits and the things that you do. And I think it's uh, I think it's absolutely vital that we actually continue to evolve, continue to think. So, um, yes, I'll, I'll give the floor to uh, Judy. Judy. Oh, thank you, Arnie. Yeah, that, that um, the learning as we go, learning what we should eat, what we can eat, what's upset us, what makes us feel overloaded, that's very gradual. It's, uh, it's a, an experience I'd urge everyone to have, you know, um, raw food, organic food, as you say, is if you can get hold of it. Not everyone can, unfortunately. Um, and as you get older, as you get older, and you see the need to eat well and look after yourself, as you say, we get older and uh, we need that energy that we used to have. Mm. <laughs> That's it. That's exactly right. Still there. <laughs> Good Someday. on you. Good on you. Beata, your thoughts, please. Mm. Um, the role of the mother and the carer in the family, the wife, um, the carer for the whole family, um, the housekeeping, all those things need definitely, um, it, it all comes with growing up and taking responsibility. Um, and then the search starts even even more toward, uh, toward fulfilling all the um, necessary functions of that family, which we are obviously dependent on the food we take in, the water that we drink, the, the environment we live in, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I love Frances Hutchinson because she always talks about half percent of uh, the world population, uh, sorry, half of the world population being women. And who are women? They are mothers and carers. Mm -hmm. And and this is, this is uh, the favorite subject. Highly recommend it um, that you would read of Francis Hutchinson's uh, articles and um, published in Social Artist and of course her books. That's right and uh, I will, I'll see if I can't just uh, disappear for a bit and go and find her um, because she's got her own website Doug, Douglas Social Credit in one word Douglas Social Credit and you'll find the, uh, the Social Artist there 
and also the her blog spot. Um, you'll find links to it. Uh, I'll make sure that uh, I do find them and get them up for you, at least to um, present them as links to the bottom of this video um, when we're posted up. I think it's really, really important. Now, the, the thing is that, okay, we talk about, and I'm just going to throw a wild card in here, how unusual. We talk about health. We talk about the food that we eat. We talk about the the role, the, the, the home carer uh, role and the environment that we live in. And there are, there's just, it's not just limited to food, but it is actually the environment, the, the, if you like, the personal environment that the home, the home giver, the home carer has to participate in. And that is the well-being of the child and the actually upraising of the children and the stability of the family. This, uh, this homekeeper, if you like, is such an important and vital role. And, uh, and without it, of course, the, um, the family can suffer badly. I think we, if we concentrate on food only, then I think we miss the mark that there's actually the, the, the spiritual, the, the body, the, the personal uh, development of, of our family as well. And that goes not just limiting for the children, but it's also the husband and wife. They both need to grow. They both need to um, be in an environment that is actually harmonious and at peace, similar to the, the backdrop we have with this garden. It appears to be at peace. Your thoughts, Judy? I wholeheartedly agree, Annie. I'm thinking back uh, as a young mum, mum with young children, I should say, and, and trying to encourage them to eat their vegetables, which were not raw then, um, and the urge to get them to eat properly. And I know some work's being done on the effect of um, processed foods and all that effect on um, children and their behaviour. And um, I think looking back when, yeah, cooking and looking after the children and it was really important, more important than I realised at the time, mm. that they ate well. Mm. Yes. Mm. The discovery often takes you uh, um, sort of awakening moment uh, because things go wrong and then you realize and that that speeds you up into wrong direct uh, actually into a direction of studying and finding out more not relying on on fables and not relying on um, what somebody else does and you've got to listen to your body basically and decide from there I think mm. a lot of time yes I agree I agree I'm just going to um, bring up um, Francis Hutchinson's uh, website mm. and uh, here it is here Douglas Social Credit and you'll find her beautiful book The Political Economy of Social Credit and Guild Socialism and uh, you'll also find uh, Further there is her understanding life and debt, her blog spot. And she's actually done a huge service for the community um, with her publications and in regard to women, artists, farmers and the unpaid. And um, I would put in there that really women, what Francis is covering is not just the role of woman, but the role of mother and homekeeper. And and that to me is most important. And that can, that can vary in each family and at the time in each family so to me it's um to me it's a beautiful um beautiful work that she's doing and i must admit that in her in her work the uh, this last social artist and you'll find it there uh winter there it is there 2018 and her work is uh, is absolutely beautiful what she's done there and the articles that she's done and the link is there and you have no trouble at all finding it and um and reading her work and those that those other contributors to her work so i think francis is doing a huge community service for um especially i, I think she targets young mums because they are the they are the most in need at the moment but i would point out that um there's also the this issue of the young males who are under significant attack 
-hmm. about their um, who they are, manhood itself. Oh, yes. And I believe that that's actually being responded to by a bloke called uh, Jordan Peterson. But anyway, we'll get back to uh, we'll get back to our our home, our environment, our health, our diet, the evolution of our thinking. That it's not static, but it's dynamic. But it also comes down to the individual actually pursuing knowledge. And if there is ever has ever been a time when they have the resources at their fingertips, it is today. Because as I've just been able to um, demonstrate to you, you search on the internet and you'll find publications and you can read them. You don't have to outlay any money. All you do is actually outlay effort and, and it can uh, enhance your thinking and build on the base because um, we do continue. This is our culture to build on the base, to find where we, what we have, what is worth holding on to, the things of great value and then building on from there. And to me, that's culture, that's civilization. Hmm. Judy Octolani. Mm. Mm, you're throwing me there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. Beata, do you have anything to, uh, to add? Um, uh, since we, we had Christmas not, not a long time ago, only just uh, last month, not even a month ago, was it? Um, mm. I, I I go to to the stable and and look at it as a perfect perfect example of what family is. Um, there is a man, there is a woman, and there is a child, mm -hmm. and it's a trinity, and it's okay. such a peaceful scene. Mm -hmm. um, the baby laying in the manger. Mm -hmm. It's it's just mm -hmm. so gorgeous, mm -hmm. and the angels come, and the and the shepherds come, and, and three kings mm -hmm. laying the gift. Mm -hmm. Yes, and mm -hmm. the gift was not actually what they brought, but what Mary brought to the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful, Beata. That's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree, and that that really is the is the Christmas message. The season that we're we're just coming out of is the Christmas message that the Savior yes. of the world was born, that He who created everything of beauty is continuing to create. His engagement with the world is ongoing. It's intimate. It's personal. It's constant, and yes. uh, and I think that is the most wonderful um, message that we can actually take. We can receive from the from the from the season we've just come out of, family. Yes, the actual um, uh, inner manger. There is family, and there is it. Uh, there it is. Even though they were poor, even though they were isolated, and they were, if you like, they were refugees, mm. and uh, couldn't even find a place. And yet, there it was. There was family, and uh, in in all its strength, in all its strength, that uh, even kings would worship. And I think that that's uh, absolutely beautiful. What a lovely. What a lovely picture, good. a verbal picture we've just painted. Mm. We've used words to illustrate something that's um, that's more profound than just, um, yeah, just what it is. So I think that's just absolutely gorgeous. And, and I think that uh, for today, I think that's actually a good run, a good establishment video. And uh, I'd like to thank our ladies for attending. I think what's uh, what we've done is lovely and it's probably a good length and what we've covered, the values of family, of uh, spiritual things. Yes. Um, not just physical things, but spiritual things, spirit, soul, and body. Yes. Mm. Thank you for joining us today, Judy Octoloni from Victoria. Thanks, Arnie. Bye. No worries. And Beata Lukes from Adelaide. Thank you, Beata. Happy New Year, everyone. Yes. And this is Arnie Lukes signing off from Crossroads. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.